All right, last thing today is our exciting endings. Isn't that exciting? Last bit of writing today. Um, so how can I use an ex what can I use for an exciting ending? You could use a dream, a hope, or a wish. You don't have to use all three. You could just use the one. Um, you could use a rhetorical question. You could link to the start somehow. Um, you could call to action or you could do a show, don't tell. So these are five great things that you could do to make your ending of your speech, which is the lasting impression that you give your audience. Um, sorry, Boris, just playing in the background, if you can hear that. Um, it's the lasting impression you're going to give your audience. So this is the most important paragraph in some ways. Now, how could I do a dream, a hope, or a wish? Well, here is an example. I hope I get a dog for Christmas next year. So that's how I could use a hope. Now, I wouldn't say this is a particularly good one, but it is an example of how you could use either a wish or hope or a dream. I'm sure that you can come up with even better ones. A rhetorical question. So end your um, end your speech with, the, with a question, a rhetorical question that makes them think. Um, so an example of a rhetorical question could be, I wonder if Charlie will play with the magpies next year. Um, that's an, another example of how you could do it. Again, not a fantastic example, but I'm sure that you will think of something um, even more exciting than that one. And it'll go with your speech as well, with your topic and theme. Link to the start. So um, if the start of your speech had something about dogs have owners and cats have staff, then it links to the ending by saying, it's cold, raining, my spouse is working, my kids are watching TV, that Fred is waiting, wagging his tail, wait, wanting pats, I'm home. So that gives you an idea that dogs are do have owners and they're not their staff like cats are. When they say cats are like star, um, have staff, it means that they just like humans to wait on them hand and foot and they don't really give you back much in return. Whereas dogs, and they've done a show don't tell here to link back to the start, um, have owners and they give back to their owners just as much as we give to them. Show don't tell. So um, this is a boring example. Therefore, I think that big families are better than small families. Now, you might have your own opinion on that, and that is fine. But the point is, that is how we see a lot of um, speeches end. To make it more interesting, we can use a show, don't tell. So remember using those five plus one senses. So what you hear, what you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel, and what you feel in your heart as well. Um, so this is how they've ended their speech. At dinner, we sit down to steaming plates with mountains of food. Dad is teasing Jeremy, Jeremy about his new girlfriend. Sarah has just conned me into helping her with her homework. We fight a lot, we laugh a lot, but a big family. But in the end, we're all friends. So that's a, a really nice homey way of really getting those um, feelings of the audience and going, oh, yeah, that is really nice rather than, oh, okay, big families are better than small families apparently. Okay, so you're making them feel, you're making them engage with what you're saying. Um, and another one is call to action. So you might have said, in conclusion, children need to grow up safely and you can help. That's okay, but it's not quite as strong as the call to action that we've got here. Can, um, can you do just two things? So you've got a rhetorical question in there as well. Give up one ice cream a week. That's three dollars a week. Give that money to a child in Nepal, and that's food for a week. Um, give them that, and they may grow. So that is a lot more powerful because they're visualizing a child in Nepal getting a week of food just from three dollars, rather than in conclusion, children need to grow up safely, and you can help. Okay, how can we help? Why is it important that I help? They've used that there. So that's a really good example of a call to action. 
Now, we've gone through those um, examples there. Hopefully they are helpful for you. You don't have to do them all. Just choose one or two, depending on um, how you think your speech will go. Um, and once you've written your ending or your exciting ending, can you post a picture of it right here for me? And then that's all you have to do for reading today. Really great effort. I know it was a lot of work today and a lot of watching videos, um, but we are at the final end of um, of the week and there's not going to be much work after this. Okay. Thanks, boys and girls, for your hard work and um, let me know if you need any help.